Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Um, hope everyone is enjoying the conference so far. Uh, they've just closed the doors in the back, so I believe that should be our signal that we should uh, get going. So my name is Neil Patel. I'm a Director of Business Development, uh, working with the credit unions across Canada. And today we have um, Vishnu Singh presenting, um, and he's the Integrated uh, Marketing Business Intelligence um, Analytics and FinTech Partnerships at Innovation Credit Union. And he has a great story um, to share with all of you in terms of how their organization went about uh, achieving growth outside of their core uh, core markets, which I'm sure all of you are experiencing at this, uh, at this stage. So without further ado, I'm gonna introduce uh, Vishnu Singh and have him present. Thank you. Thanks very much for the warm welcome. Uh, and thanks, Neil, for the introduction. So um, it's a real privilege for me to be here today, of course, and getting the opportunity to speak to you. Uh, it's always great to get out of a two-year, get out of jail uh, based on the pandemic and um, back into to conferences. So it's, it's great to be in person. So um, as Neil has mentioned, uh, I, um, I work for Innovation Credit Union and uh, the credit union space is relatively new to me. I, um, I spent about uh, 15 years in the telecom domain uh, working for Ericsson. So I see some parallels and some interesting um, opportunities as, at the moment, as similarly to what we have seen in telecom. And I'll, I'll, draw, I'll talk about them a little bit. So just a quick intro about uh, Innovation Credit Union themselves. We are, of course, on the western side of the province in Saskatchewan. Uh, we're the thir third largest credit union, and we have about 400 uh, employees and about 60,000 members. And as many purpose-driven organizations today, we are looking at how we can simplify the lives and banking for, for Canadians and really about how we can humanize the digital experience uh, for members. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the challenges that um, we are, we are facing at the moment. And this might resonate with some of you if you're in the space uh, and um, probably in other industries that you're seeing as well. So we've been working with Enveronix uh, for uh, probably uh, over a number of years before my arrival at, at Innovation. And um, uh, we've been really, the input that they have provided us has really helped us in terms of how we are going to market and building our strategic plan. So our relationship to, with Enveronix really to ensure our growth marketing strategy is of course, as many companies today, uh, using data to, to build that up. So we wanted to paint of course uh, uh, a picture based on, on data and understanding some of the factors that are really impacting our business. And here of course what you can see when you start from really the environmental factors looking outside of the business and really starting about looking at some of the numbers from a population perspective, you can see sort of the, the growth rates that we're experiencing uh, across Canada and um, really where the growth was coming from, as you've heard today in a number of presentations, the opportunities around, around new Canadians. Um, digging into that a bit more and bringing that home to our market, a uh, key consideration for our strategy was to really understanding the changing demographics of our membership and of course within the province. Uh, as you can see from the screen here, um, Saskatchewan, the growth rate was about 3.1% from 2016 to 2021. And within our, what we call our primary trading areas, we were having a negative population growth of, of 0.8 during that same period. So in order to think about growth and moving from where we are today, this was of course a key challenge for us as we felt we, we needed to get out in terms of new markets, looking at markets, of course, like the urban centers, like Saskatoon and Regina, or where we need to focus. And of course, the populations uh, looking into those markets, you had a number of new Canadians entering into those areas as well. 
the other challenge that we were facing in terms of, um, uh, of what was impacting our growth was very much looking at our own data and our own membership base. So along with the sort of the decreased population within our primary trading area, we're also seeing the average age of our membership increase. And many of you resonate with the aging membership population that, that we have. And there is a risk with this, and this is a key risk for us. Um, sorry, I need to go back to a previous slide. I'm not sure what's happening here. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, so there is a risk here going back to sort of the, the aging population and the membership base. Um, and we worked with Enveronics to really bring that picture home for us in terms of what is the risk from a mortality perspective. Um, so this analysis was looking over the next year in terms of the next year, the next five years, the next ten years by product type to really understand the business that we are gonna lose as a result of the mortality. Um, so b based on those mortality probabilities, we can see that we we're gonna lose about $63.7 million in total funds at the risk of leaving our organization. And those are big numbers for a small credit union uh, that has about 60,000 members. And a significant amount, about 627 million in 10 years really large numbers and, 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 and pretty difficult that keeps us up at night in terms of how are we gonna fill that gap in terms of this business leaving the organization. Because as you know, as these members are, are, are aging, the, their, their family and that wealth transfer doesn't automatically happen because they might be, of course, banking with someone else. So understanding that delta really paints a picture for us. Um, the other one that's an um, external factor and many of you are very familiar with, it's really around some of these evolving expectations of consumers. We know that our consumers and our members today, what they experience in one industry, they expect in another. And that's a story we all hear about in disintermediation and what's happening in this space. Um, so things, uh, you know, areas around personalization and how we treat our members, how we deliver products and services, and that digital experience. We couldn't go without saying a bit about the technology piece as well and how much that's moving so quickly. So we wanna make sure that as a financial services organization, we need to make sure that we are delivering that simplified experience that our members are, exper uh, that are of course getting used to today. And this is an area that's really from my experience in working in the telecom domain, where working at Ericsson, where mobile operators were spending billions of dollars in building out infrastructure, and yet they weren't able to monetize that investment. You had the internet players providing free services for consumers, Google, Facebook, et cetera, and so on, or able to, of course, um, gain mind share with, with, with consumers. So I think from a financial services perspective, we're really at a crossroads when we look at the, you know, the smartphone and what it delivers today and what we can do from a, a digital experience for our members. Um, another area where EA sort of and Veronics analytics added value for us, the only way we were gonna grow was to go into new markets and that's sort of Regina and Saskatoon that I mentioned. However, we were not going to have any bricks and mortar in those markets. We need to have a digital offering uh, to get into that space. So as a credit union with a digital offering, we need to be la laser focused on the segments. And we're looking for a particular type of segment. It's really a sliver of a sliver. Those consumers that are really have the propensity to bank digitally that doesn't care about branches, who's okay with calling a contact center, and of course, going towards more of a self-serve perspective. So while our, membership, while our sort of mature membership segments were, in, were, in, were average in terms of their online and mobile banking usage, we can see that our moderate and younger members uh, were starting to show, uh, of course, above average in some of the online spaces and below average in sort of the traditional 
uh, in branch ATM and call center transactions. So by understanding sort of the digital usage, channel usage of our segments, we were able to identify those parts of the population which would be most likely to, of course, and have that affinity and propensity to bank digitally. So we're looking for that, you know, it's not for everyone, for that very specific group of members for the digital adoption. Um, to be able to deliver that digital offering, um, so what's a marketing guy doing with a technology slide? And that's really an area where, as you've seen, the MarTech stack continues to, to build in, 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 in many organizations. Um, you know, we were an organization that relied heavily a lot on third parties. And today we want to be much more in control of our destiny. Uh, when you talk about login information, you know, who's using an iPhone, who's using an Android, what's the age of those people, what's the time of day, what kind of transaction are, are they doing? Um, it was very difficult for us by relying on third parties because you have to wait, et cetera, get that, those, that real time reporting that you're looking for. So we made a decision, of course, to, um, to be able to deliver on that digital, digital offering. Uh, Microsoft was a key partner for us. And of course, a Turkish company we work with in our banking platform, Veripark, um, for, for mobile and online banking solution that we have today. So the investment in technology and our CRM from Veripark, who is a Microsoft partner, provides us with that single view of the member so that we're able to uh, have that 360, 720 view in terms of their transactions, how we s serve, solve, and sell uh, going forward. In addition to this sort of investment in Microsoft and, and Veripark, we've also made a significant investment in Adobe for a new website. So here are some screenshots in terms of our offering uh, on, our, on our website and what it looks like. Uh, very archaic in the past to what it looks like today. Um, very much more uh, better experience, much more attractive uh, with the our Adobe website that we have today. Things like the mortgage calculator or account selector tools uh, where we have members where we drive traffic to our website through our advertising, whether it's organic, paid, et cetera, and, and generating, um, of course, leads and acquisition for, uh, for our business going forward. Um, so as we look at the next step in, in our journey to really understand as we get into new markets, and Veronix played a key role in helping us from a segmentation pr perspective. This is clearly sort of their bread and butter and domain uh, where we, you know, we really needed to understand the scope of the opportunity in each segment, what is important to these segments, how do they value our proposition and our offering? How can we reach them? How can we be successful in these groups? So of course, Enveronix is um, based on their prism segmentation model. They're able to assist us in sort of visualizing and understanding Regina and, Saskat and, and, and Saskatoon and providing us with that data so they're able to better target and understand those groups and the population of those markets that we're getting into. Another benefit, of course, of the prism segmentation was that it helps us in to identify segments of our own members so we can identify sort of lookalikes and find more of them in our existing markets. We also worked with, um, with Enveronix on understanding the banking relationships. And some of this might be table stakes for, for many of you, but really as we look at our strategic plan and trying to take much of a data-based approach into the data that we had available to us, uh, we really needed to understand sort of the competitive landscape and looking at whether it's a big five, are you banking with a credit union, where are we getting our customers from? And it's quite interesting to see that, um, you know, looking at the last sort of uh, the 24 months of uh, acquisition that we, uh, you know, of members that we acquired, it was interesting to see that the groups that we actually were acquiring in Regina and, and, and Saskatoon, they actually had a weaker preference for a credit union. So even though we didn't have a physical presence in Regina and Saskatoon, they perceived us to be an affiliate of some kind with a digital arm. 
So that was an interesting insight for us in terms of how we position ourselves in that marketplace. Because here you can see segments B, C, D, and K were sort of our focus in Regina and Saskatoon. Uh, another sort of key area to look into as we build out our strategic plan was, of course, what was really the untapped potential among these groups. So in this sort of step was where we really looked at the untapped potential within our existing six regions and the two new regions that we'd identified, Saskatoon and Regina. Um, this really allowed us to see sort of the penetration by market, by target segment, and from there, we're able to, of course, build a growth strategy for each region based on the segmentation and the market potential. Taking it a step further in understanding the, the groups, in that uh, the next step in the market gap analysis was really looking at the different products. So what do you offer? Is it a savings product? Is it an investment product? Which, what sort of the offer would be for the different groups? So this is all for me in, in the sense that it's, yes, it is table stakes, but it's important for us as we build our plan and check every 60, 90 days, how are we holding up in these areas? A big part of the credit union, of course, is that the way that we position ourselves is really uh, very much on being local, being in the community, and the things that we do, and we're not for profit in the sense as the big banks do, but. I wanted to share with you a little bit from a creative perspective because I'm a marketing guy, a little bit about some of the creatives that we've done from a, a brand awareness in some of these markets. There's more uh, y if you're interested in um, uh, on our website, but it's, it was certainly a successful campaign for us. Uh, this concept around bank free. Um, so I talked a bit about the platform and our investment in, in, in Veripark and, and Microsoft, um, really pushing things up to the cloud and what's next for us. There are about 30 modules that we're implementing. Uh, the next area that where we will com where what's coming up in the future is that as we grow into sort of the competitive landscape, next best action is a module is where we will be looking at how we engage with customers with relevant personalized insights. So as an advisor opens up the CRM, uh, what they'll see is a tile in terms of what's the next best action. And it's based on the concept of, of course, solve the problem first for the member. So if there are any cases that are open, you will solve first. Secondly, uh, that's when you will get into really, is there any opportunities for sale? So this pro product recommendation tool is collecting all the data and uh, based on uh, uh, our advanced analytics and AI, we have a model that will recommend whether it's a, a mortgage product uh, as the next best action for this customer from a sales perspective. So this is of course um, gonna be a game changer for us as an advisor coming in to, to work. Really need to, you know, you have a list of a portfolio of, uh, of members that you manage, really prioritizing their work and figuring out what's really uh, the next best action will help them in terms of identifying what are the, what are the, uh, the tasks for the day for themselves. Um, this slide sort of gives you sort of a bit of a, a summary of the different steps in the process as we built our plan out, working with Enveronix. For each of our target, sort of four targeted segments, we were able to, to create our different brand awareness campaigns. We were able to, of course, uh, identify products that were relevant for them. And you can look at each of these steps. Where do you have the competence in your organization to deliver, or who do you want to partner with to bring some of those competences in into the organization? For us, uh, to give you some specific examples, um, uh, when it comes to analytics, it's an area where we don't have a lot of in-house competence when it comes to search engine optimization or website, it's not something that we have in-house. So you need to pick where are the areas uh, that you wanna have those competence and that's gonna be the differentiator for you as you build out your strategy and for the organization. So the big question is always, great Vishnu, you've done a fantastic endorsement for Enveronix and, and Neil did a great job and he's gonna get a bonus at the end of the year. Um, really, what are the results? 
Um, so there are a couple of things. Um, you know, marketing is, it's, um, it's not, you know, we really don't have a crystal ball, right? We have to try things and look at the results that we can get and kind of continue to evolve as we um, A-B test or whatever that we, that we do in different, um, in different campaigns. So what I do, wh what I can share with you in terms of uh, what we have achieved, it's we've seen a 58% of our newly onboarded members in Regina and Saskatoon were part of the target segments, B, C, and D. Uh, prior to this, we had a 9% brand awareness in those markets. We've seen a, over a 15% jump in brand awareness in these two markets. Um, the average age, as we've said, that we have an aging uh, member membership population. Um, we're targeting new segments with a digital offering, like uh, account opening, uh, loans, unsecured loans, 100% uh, online. The average age that we've seen was 39 years old. The average credit score was 691. The average deposit from these members were over $1,500, and the average loans was about $20,000. 63% uh, of the new of our new memberships came through the digital channel. So, some really strong and encouraging results for us to continue and build and uh, develop on. So, in conclusion, what I would say, of course, uh, the data part is extremely important. Uh, as you build out your strategic plan, uh, you need to, of course, that's based on some evidence that you have but the magic of the art and the science together will help you deliver some results for your organization. Thank you very much. I can take some questions if there are any. When did you decide that uh, digital, and was it like a full service digital or omni-channel to begin with and then merging into a s somewhat close to full service digital? Yeah, so we started about five years ago this digital transformation journey at, at Innovation. Um, we're, um, of course, uh, we've got the CRM implemented and a couple of the modules uh, we're hoping in, by the end of 2024 to be full service, ready to go with all of our offerings, uh, mortgages, uh, et cetera, full product suite online. Um, but it's been sort of this um, crawl, walk, run type of approach. Um, and um, the, the decision to go with Microsoft was the first decision that we made, and uh, Veripark was, was the second. So, um, you know, these challenges that we've had around uh, the aging population and um, the, the other part to what we're trying to do is um, we will be, you know, we're on this journey of becoming a federal credit union and that's sort of the other big part of the strategy. And we will grow in new markets, but it will be truly a uh, digital play. We will not have any uh, physical locations. Um, but it's uh, continued to evolve, I would say, in the next couple of years. Does that answer your question? Sorry. Yeah. You're welcome. Is that a question? Um, hi, just looking at your title, I'm interested in um, exploring the fintech component of your role. Yeah, that's. Um, so when I first joined Innovation, as I mentioned, I spent about 14 years in the telecom domain. Um, working with mobile operators around the globe. And um, financial services is, is extremely new to me. It's just about two years I'm in this space. Um, so what I look for from a FinTech perspective or, or what falls into my domain uh, is um, looking for partnerships. So I built out a FinTech strategy in the sense that we're looking for partnerships based on someone that can, in the back office for efficiencies uh, is one area. Uh, the second is around uh, growth in new membership from a services perspective. And um, you know the, what we bring to the table is really our knowledge and experience 
of our leadership team as uh, experts in the financial services industry, right? They have a lot of experience from a risk, credit, banking, that area. Um, so it's been a little bit of a slow process for us in that space. Um, we've been, been very careful looking at the value chain. There are a number of areas, uh, whether it's wealth, uh, insurance, uh, buy now, pay later. There are a bunch of, of different areas. Um, but um, we haven't launched anything as yet. We're close to uh, one that's um, gonna happen pretty shortly. Um, but um, I would say in the next six months or so. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Any other questions? Great. Thank you.